In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Welcome to Catholic Television Network. If you have not yet subscribed, kindly consider subscribing and click the notification bell for weekly updates. And this is the homily for the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this feast occurs on 14th of September every year. In this feast, we recall and celebrate the saving mystery of the cross. Today, we celebrate the feast of the exaltation of the cross, and the cross is linked with Good Friday. The Good Friday and the sufferings of Jesus on the cross is the pillar of our Christian life. According to an ancient tradition, the triumph of the cross, the glorious cross, was first celebrated on 14th of September in the year 335. This happened after Emperor Constantine and his wife Helen built a church of the resurrection in Greek Anastasis on the site of Golgotha and the Holy Sepulchre. The feast of the triumph of the cross became popular henceforth in the east and later it is spread to the West. Our Gospel text today is lifted from the discourse between Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus is in the darkness just like us and Jesus shows him the way to the light. Jesus quotes the episode we have read in the first reading from the book of Numbers about the bronze serpent. This episode was well known among the Jews. The venom of the snakes in the Sinai could only be healed by looking up on the bronze serpent on a tree. Our sins, dear brothers and sisters, are like this venom and only the power of the cross can heal us. Jesus defeated sin and death on the cross. The episode in the book of Numbers is a type of Jesus who will be lifted up on the wood of the cross. What healed Israelites in the desert is not magic of the bronze serpent. In fact, what healed above all else was that gesture and the act of turning to God. We are therefore invited to turn our eyes to the cross and ask for healing from the Lord. Do you have a crucifix in your house? Do you pray looking or holding on the crucifix? Cross is a sign of victory and we should turn to the cross when we pray always. The cross is the center of our Christian life. That is why the crucifix is placed inside all Catholic churches and chapels to signify our source of healing and strength. St. John was at the foot of the cross and he witnessed Jesus being lifted up both physically from the ground and mystically into the glory of the cross. For him, the cross and the resurrection are one and the same mystery which he expresses with a single word that is lifted up. For John, the word crucified means the same as exalted. For John, ascension begins already on Good Friday. Easter does not come to rub out the cross. On the contrary, Easter shows that the cross was the glory of God. Jesus says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. The cross became, as it were, a paradox to many. For Greeks, this was a sign of barbarism. 
For Romans, it was punishment. For Jews, it was a curse from God. But for St. Paul, the cross is the wisdom of God. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 23, you will get this message. Jesus accepted death on the cross out of love. The cross is the manifestation of the divine trinity. The deepest meaning of the cross is to be sought in the very essence of God. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father, Jesus says. The cross reveals to us who God is. He is pure love. Jesus gave himself totally for us without reservation. A sign of shame and curse for unbelievers becomes a sign of victory for those who believe in God. The cross becomes a sign of our salvation. A saint, Pope John Paul II, in Salvifici Dolores, reminds us to take sufferings we go through a salvific event. And taking the cross is meant to purify us for the kingdom of God. Today, millions are suffering because of COVID-19. Many have lost their loved ones, others infected, others are in ICU, others have lost their jobs, and so on. Today, we are invited to raise up our eyes on the saving wood of the cross. The cross is the path on which the Father opens the gates of the kingdom to mankind. Through the cross, our ransom was paid in full. Through the cross, heaven and earth is reconciled. St. Rita of Cassia reminds us, that the cross is our ladder to heaven, and we should never run away from the cross. We should never fear making the sign of the cross, dear brothers and sisters, as most of us do most often in public forums. We should never be ashamed of our faith. We should be proud to make a sign of the cross with a deep faith in the Trinity. Today, unlike Good Friday, We celebrate the joy of the cross. In this way, the church wishes to remind us that joy is perfectly compatible with mortification and pain. Today we are called to be more and more united with Christ who saved us without merit. Suffering and tribulation are inevitably and eventually the order of the day for many people. But suffering of itself alone cannot transform or purify a person. It may even be the cause of rebellion and hatred. Many of us today abandon Jesus when we meet the cross. Think of how many people have abandoned their faith after losing their loved ones with COVID-19. Christianity does not mean purely human happiness, free from pain and accompanied by material wealth. We must not lose hope or faith in Jesus. He waits for us on the cross. The tribulations you are going through are necessary for your holiness and for the salvation of many souls. Within the mystery of the cross, our sufferings united to those of Christ acquire an incomparable value for the entire church and the whole of humankind. Suffering, when seen in its true light, serves as means of loving more and more and therefore produces great peace and joy. St. Jose Maria Escriva, commenting on the way of the cross, said, We must travel along the way of self-giving and the cross on our shoulders 
a smile on our lips and light in our hearts. As a second reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philippians tells us, Though he was God, Jesus humbled himself. He emptied himself from divinity to humanity so that he can lead us to God. He did all this. He lowered himself. The self-abasement of Jesus Christ was for the sake of our salvation. He lowered him himself, even accepting death, death on the cross, out of love. But God raised him on high. And this is the reason why today we celebrate the cross, because it is on this cross that we got our salvation. It is on this cross that we were redeemed from captivity. We were set free. As Jesus says in the synagogue, I have come to set free the prisoners. Those who have been held captives for ages, I have come to set them free. Jesus died on the cross. And so the cross is a sign of our salvation, is a reason of our joy and happiness, because it is a sign of the one who loved us. And he did not spare himself. He died on the cross so that he can lead us to God. Dear brothers and sisters, let us ask for the grace to understand the deep meaning of this cross. Let us ask for the, that grace so that we may raise up our eyes to heaven always. That we may come up we may come out of our depression and sufferings and look on the cross where we can get our true help. Let us follow cheerfully Jesus on the cross. May he help us to carry our daily crosses and find happiness in, in, in everything that we do. Let us ask him to be with us so that as we carry our crosses, we may find happiness in always doing the will of God. Let us put all our worries, our sufferings, be they physical or moral, unto Jesus with faith and trust in him. May he, the triumphant one, bless us and bless our families, bless our work, and be with us always, especially when we are in difficulties. Dear brothers and sisters, I wish you a happy feast of the exaltation of the cross. And may the Lord bless us all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.